graphene enhanced concrete. So combined effort again, uh, it's University of Manchester working with Nationwide Engineering. And again, as always, I like to give a little bit of context. Concrete produces a good chunk of the world's carbon dioxide emissions. In fact, they produce about 8%, which if concrete was a country, it'd be the third biggest polluter. So, wow. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> That's a ton, dude. So yeah. they, they came together with the University of Manchester, which by the way, uh, Daniel and I, we've gone to a bunch of these graphene expos and we've met people from that university. They're, they're leading the efforts in, in graphene applications. They're amazing. Uh, we had someone, uh, James Baker, I think, yeah, that turned uh, uh, whiskey into water uh, with a graphene filter. Super cool stuff. I'm going on a tangent. Anyway, uh, so this implementation puts a small amount of graphene into the mixture of cement and water. And what that yeah. does, it just helps the binding. Sorry, go ahead. And graphene, if people don't know, is just a really thin hexagonal form of, ca of carbon. It's known as like the super material, the strongest material ever, the lightest material ever, most electrically conductive. It had like a big boom, won the Nobel Prize in 2010. And we haven't seen that many real world applications for it yet. And that's why we went to all those conferences is for people to try and find real industry applications for this super material. Exactly. And that, that's why I love this so much. Like they added the graphene into the cement and water mixture. It helped with the binding and it increased the strength of concrete by 30%. Like it sounds like low hanging fruit, but the impact is pretty significant. So the, the math from here on out is pretty straightforward, right? You have something that's 30% as strong. So you don't need that much of it anymore. If you don't need that much of it anymore, you don't need to produce cement that much anymore, which reduces emissions. And if you don't need that much cement to go a certain site, that means the transportation, uh, the weight of it is going to be less. So you're emitting less. So overall, you're saving a lot um, when it comes to global carbon dioxide emissions. You save a lot emissions. Do you also save money? Good question. So uh, the numbers I was going to get into is that making this uh, concrete enhanced I mean, graphene enhanced concrete, which is known as concretine, is actually 5% more expensive. But because you need less of it, on average, they cited that you can save anywhere between 10 to 20% on a given project. So that's awesome. That's awesome. So it, it aligns the incentives in the right way. Exactly. As a, as a construction company, I want to use concretine because it costs less and also it uh, reduces the emissions impact of it as well. And I'm happy you brought up for the people that are actually implementing this. Um, because this process is non-disruptive. That means you don't need any new equipment to add the graphene and get concretine. You don't need like special training for how you pour it. You simply add it during the mixture and okay, then you're so done. It's, just, it's, it's in this like powder concrete mix. When you're mixing it, it gets mixed in with the water and that's yep. a done deal. So you don't need any new equipment. That's it, really exciting. It's a done deal. Um, and they had someone, a global supply chain expert, do an analysis and they estimate that you can save about 2% of the global carbon dioxide emissions if everyone was to implement this. So Substantial by 2%, savings. you mean reduce the total concrete emissions by 25%. Exactly. Right? So, so from the, 8 to 6. So the, the entire world's uh, CO2 emissions would reduce 2% by yes. using this tech. That's yes. really exciting. Very, very exciting stuff. Uh, I forgot to mention, by the way, this article was also... Brought to us by Daniel's dad. He's just been killing it. Another super yeah, fan. My dad's the MVP. <laughs> he really is. He really is. Um, but yeah, so the, the final thing I was going to say is that the first implementation of this has been uh, at a forced pour for a foundation for a gym near Stonehenge, which is in the United Kingdom. So, you know, it's it's happening. It's probably going to take some time until it gets to, you know, building applications and roads and things like that. But, you know, before, Dan, we've talked about 3D printing houses with concrete and how that already saves money. And I could see this being a perfect implementation uh, for the 3D printing solution. Yeah, I, I, th I really like the non-disruptive aspect of this as well. As did I. It will, it'll integrate really well into other new technologies that use concrete as well as traditional construction methods using concrete. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see if this takes hold specifically because of the CO2 emissions reduction um, it, it, and all those incentives being aligned, the economic ones, the environmental ones. For me, this just makes sense and I'm excited about it. And you, you said it before, you and I are graphene fanboys. So I'm, I'm just excited for a real world graphene application to take hold and just keep on going. Yeah, let's, let's hope that, you know, we can stop talking. 
stop talking about space elevators because everyone makes fun of those and start talking about like the real tangible impactful benefits we can make with graphene starting today amen Uh, amen